Okay, so I've been wanting to get back to the Easy Spin motor and scale it up, and I finally got a 3D printer that I can scale it up on. So I've got the Rostock V3 from CNC, and you can see the uh, first layer there, and this is just the rotor. So I've got the printers going, printing parts for the large Easy Spin motor. And you can see I've got one of the bobbins here, the rotor, sit down inside there. So pretty excited. I'm really excited to have this uh, larger 3D printer that let me print these larger parts like that. So that is uh, super exciting. Got the Orion here going. It's working away on one of the uh, red bobbins. I've got my two Affinias uh, creating some of the black bobbins. So. Yeah, at this rate, this thing will get printed out pretty fast, and we'll give this thing a test. Okay, so I've wanted to build a larger Easy Spin motor for quite a while, and this guy's been in the works for quite some time, and I'm finally getting it finished up. At this point, it's not tuned perfectly at all, I just slapped the reed switch down here, and to properly tune this, I'm going to have to hook up my scope, and I'm really going to use two reed switches for the, the best tuning. And in the past, I know I've, I've been able to get almost double the runtime by properly tuning this motor um, in the smaller version with two reed switches. At this point, I've got a single um, little capacitor on here. This thing's a, let me see if I can get it, it's a 1000 microfarad electrolytic capacitor that it's running on right now. And uh, I'll just go ahead and stop it and let it start up again so you can see the uh, the way this thing starts up on that capacitor. So normal easy spin motor behavior. Uh, what I'm excited about in this particular design is obviously its size makes it easy to experiment with. These are freely, uh, the friction holds these uh, bobbins in. I can remove these and test different wire gauges, different sizes. So it's, it's very nice in that respect. The previous design, it was a little difficult to remove the rotor. So I've extended the length here on the shaft. This can slide up. You can easily lift this rotor out, swap coils around, slide the uh, rotor back in. So I'll release the 3D files for this design over at laserhacker.com. Check the video description for a link uh, to the 3D files. I'll also give a link uh, to the magnets that I used on this particular build. I'm not going to have time to get those links up here immediately, but they'll show up at laserhacker.com over the next couple days. And uh, this, this is a very fun, fun build, and I really do like the larger size. It's uh, also got a much more substantial needle right here, and that should allow me to machine a small pulley. And I will be able to uh, connect things off of this shaft, and uh, that should be interesting as well. And in doing that, this, this just like the previous ones, makes a great uh, generator. So I'll go ahead and hook my multimeter up over here and show you the voltage climb when I uh, spin the rotor. It makes a very nice low friction generator. So this may actually become a very good generator to use with the Atmo motors. You know, if you're collecting atmospheric electricity and you need a low friction generator uh, to step that down to a lower voltage and to charge, you know, supercapacitors or something, this may be a good base design for that. So I'll go ahead and hook up the multimeter and show you the generating effect, and then I'll go ahead and answer some questions. There's been a lot of questions on the last uh, Easy Spin motor video that I put up, and uh, one of those questions in particular I want to answer in this video. So anyway, let's go ahead and do some tests. All right, we've got the multimeter connected to the electrolytic capacitor, and you can see the voltage drop here on the electrolytic capacitor, and I just want to show you the generator effect. So. I'm just lightly spinning this rotor, and you can see the voltage now climbing on that capacitor. And that's just a, a quick spin on the motor shaft. So 
I'll spin it here a couple more times and that'll climb right up, you know, it'll be up at 40 volts before you know it. So, that is the, the generator effect. So it makes a very nice low friction generator. <clears throat> and you can see it's still climbing just on the inertia that I gave it there just from spinning the, uh, the shaft. So, now it's peaked and it's going to begin its slow progression back down. All right, so in the last Easy Spin Motor video, uh, one of the questions I saw tossed around was, is this actually a, a motor or is this just a very low friction flywheel? And you know, I've always thought of this as kind of a flywheel hybrid, you know, so that's kind of my position on that. But even though this one's not fully tuned, I, it's a test we can do and it's pretty easy. What I'll do is I'll connect up some LiPo batteries here get this running at a set voltage and uh, I'll disconnect the capacitor and the reed switch and just let it free spin down and we'll see how many minutes that takes. And then I can do the test again with this in play and it'll give us a good idea as to the difference. Now again, it's not, I have not tuned this up at all. I have not even connected this up to my scope. I may release a future video that shows how I tune the easy spin motors because just plopping the reed switch down here and checking the current draw, you can get this, you know, maybe drawing 20 microamps, which is about what this one dra draws right now. I did a current test on it when I was at the shop. But if I do some proper tuning, I expect to get that down under 10 microamps, you know, and just greatly increase the runtime, make the whole system much more efficient. Who have we here? These guys keep showing up in my video, and uh, bye bye. So, anyway, I'll go ahead and get that ready. Now, I do want to say, even in the previous video, it should have been obvious that this thing uh, would run much longer with the reed switch and the electrolytic capacitor in play, because if you stop the system and you bring it to a dead stop, like I did in the previous video, you can let it start up again on the voltage that's still in that little uh, capacitor there. So that should be an indicator that this is going to run much, much longer. Another thing you can do is you can add drag to the system. So basically, you hear the drag that I'm adding to the system, the fact it keeps pulling against that drag, and then when you release, builds back up in RPM, again, tells you that this is certainly some sort of hybrid flywheel. It's not just a uh, rotor in motion using its mass, you know, to carry the inertia and, and keep itself going for a set time. If that was the case, none of those effects would be seen. So I do kind of like the ideas of this being a, uh, a hybrid flywheel type device. But anyway, let's go ahead and we'll set up for the experiment and uh, do a test. Okay, so I have the motor running on a couple LiPo batteries connected in series here, and it's running at a set RPM. It's, it's stabilized. It's been running for quite a while. I've got a little USB-powered uh, soldering iron. It's running on the Solon 1.5. Uh, the, these things are in testing. I may put these up at Tesla Maker as I test them on systems, but so far I'm really, really happy with these guys. You can see the light there shows that it's on, heats up in like 15 seconds. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect uh, the small wire coming from the motor. I'll go ahead and start the timer now. We'll give this a little extra head start, but okay. So I'm desoldering the wire. So I just desoldered the run wire. And what this is now doing is the reed switch is out of the system and the capacitor. So now it's just doing a timed rundown just to see the difference that it has between running as a flywheel and running as an easy spin motor. So I'll go ahead and speed up the video uh, through this section and uh, we'll just go ahead and see how long this uh, spins for. Okay, so you can see at four minutes in, the rotor's basically stopped. So, considering we started the timer just a little before I disconnected it from the capacitor, I'm gonna say that it runs for about four minutes on the uh, voltage from the, the battery, that set voltage. So, I'll go ahead and connect it up to the battery. We'll get it started again, and we'll do a time rundown test with the reed switch, you know, with the whole easy spin circuitry in play and we will go ahead and just see what the uh, difference is there. So, four minutes.
Okay, so I've got the same batteries here, same starting voltage, uh, so same RPM. I've given it time to stabilize. Everything is uh, just like it was at the beginning of the last test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the battery and let it run down now as a hybrid flywheel system. So here we go. We'll go ahead and start the timer. And we got four minutes, uh, you know, in the previous setup. So I already know from past experience and just what I know about these motors that at this point I could actually stop the rotor and let it start again and it would run well over four minutes. Um, you'll see what I mean as this thing runs down. So anyway, the test is on. I will get these things uh, out of the way. And I'm going to have to uh, drive into work this morning, so it's very likely that I may have to bring this setup with me in the car. Uh, just so I can monitor this test because it's going to run a while. I bet this thing's going to run for over half an hour, even on this uh, 1000 microfarad electrolytic here. And, and again, I have not tuned the system yet. So once the system's tuned up, the runtime is going to increase. You know, it may even double what it's currently at. So anyway, the test has started. We'll let this run, see how long this runs down for. And we will uh, go from there. I'm not going to be able to shoot this probably in one continuous shot, but I'll do my best to uh, try to get this in, in one shot. We'll see how much battery I have on the camera here and whether or not it's able to uh, to handle the rundown. But all right, folks, let's uh, all keep experimenting. Okay, so you can see that we've just come up on the four minute mark. So the four minute mark is the amount of time or the amount of energy that's stored in the rotation, you know, the inertia of the rotating flywheel. You've got about four minutes of energy there. And you can see that the uh, RPM on this is barely uh, slowed down since we started it. So it's going to run much, much, much longer than four minutes. So anyway, we'll, I'll go ahead and keep the, uh, the film rolling. We'll see here how long this thing goes for. We're going to have to have breakfast here at the table, so I'll probably have to move the location of this, but I'll try to keep it one continuous shot if I'm able to. I am not sure how long this is going to run myself. I, this is the first timed run test I've done on this particular build. I just finished this build up last night. And like I've said, it's not really all that tuned, so this will be interesting. But uh, anyway, enjoy the rest of the video. I will probably uh, speed it up and then slow down the film and check in at certain points because when I leave the video running in real time, it takes up a lot of video time and I've had a lot of folks complain about that. Of course, if I speed the video up, some people say I'm cheating. There's no reason to worry about cheating. Just type easy spin motor on YouTube and look at all the replications. Uh, these things work uh, just like I'm showing here and they're very, very interesting. And at this point, I consider them a hybrid flywheel type device. So let's all keep experimenting. Let's all keep uh, sharing. And uh, I'll have a lot more uh, interesting projects coming up here in the near, near future. As I find time, I will uh, upload them and share. All right, folks, talk later, bye. All right, so we're about 11, 12 minutes in on the run, and I've moved this to the outside. We've gotta eat breakfast inside. I've gotta get ready to run to work. I may have to bring this in the car with me on the way to work, I don't know, but you can see we far surpassed the four minute run, and uh, this will carry on. It's gonna run a very, very long time for you know 1,000 uh, microfarad capacitor. So very interesting. It's a good hybrid flywheel, and I will keep experimenting with it. We'll let it run on from here.
All right, so 35 minutes. So it ran about another four minutes just at that low RPM. So there you go, folks. 35 minutes versus four minutes. Good runtime comparison. Uh, very, very fascinating.